All right, so in this video, I'm going to be uh, talking about the different observations you should get with a single slit, a double slit, and a diffraction grating. And then I'm going to finish off by actually showing where the diffraction grating equation comes from. Um, so a few key definitions that we need to know to start off with. So interference, you may well have met before if you've done the stationary waves topic previously, and it's very similar. So essentially, um, when we're dealing with optics, constructive interference is when two progressive may waves meet in phase. So they have zero radians phase difference, and what you get is their amplitudes adding together to give you a maximum resultant amplitude when they meet like that. We also have destructive interference when they meet in antiphase or pi radians phase difference. And in those situations, their amplitudes add together to give a minimum resultant amplitude. So because the waves might not necessarily have the same amplitude, they don't necessarily cancel out to give you zero, but they will definitely give you a minimum. So something new, uh, path difference. So in these optics type, like different things, we're going to be looking at um, the interference of multiple sets of waves. And one of the key things with the fringe pattern that is produced by them is knowing the path difference between the waves that are functioning. So if you have two waves, it's the difference in distance travelled by those waves to get to a certain point, and I'll show you that in an example a bit later. And all of this stuff is based on the principles of diffraction. Um, so this is when a wave encounters something of a similar size to its wavelength and it causes it to change direction and spread out, in fact, in all directions. So it's this principle that allows you to hear people round corners, for instance, because the sound is about usually a similar sort of wavelength to the size of like rooms, corridors, that kind of thing. So it allows it to spread out in those regions. So let's have a look at some single slit interference. So what you can see here in the red is the fringe pattern produced. So just to sketch the apparatus, you would need to uh, set this up. You'd have some sort of source of light. You would be passing it through a single slit, and this causes it to diffract, and you would get an interference pattern when it actually interferes with itself. And then so if we put a screen here, and I'll dot in a central line like this. This pattern below is what we would see on the screen. So this dotted line is sort of equivalent to here. So that's that would be at this position on the screen would be here. And then going to the left and right would be going to the left and right on this. So some key things to notice. This central one here, the central fringe is actually... Um, double the width of all the other fringes produced. So that's what these are known as. These are called fringes and the fringes of light and these are formed on the screen if you're using visible light and you'll notice with a single slit the central is double the width of all the others. And we can actually calculate the width of the central one um, like this and we essentially calculate it from some different properties. So we would have on the top line the 2 times the wavelength of light times the distance of the slit from the screen. So in here this would be your D and then you divide that by the slit width, which usually is given the symbol A for a slit width. Uh, so that's the how wide this slit is here, is the A on your bottom line here. So that allows you to calculate the width of the central one, and then to get the width of all the other ones, you just take out the two, essentially. So that's an equation you can use to govern it. So let's actually look at what this looks like more mathematically what is it that's producing this pattern so you get a intent what's called an intensity pattern so if it's red light let's stick with that so if we map the intensity of light arriving at each of the spots it would look something like this uh, a bit neater actually but and then what you'd get is these 
subsequent peaks looking like that. That's very rough, but that's approximately what it looks like. And you'll notice that these peaks also are, this one is double the width of these ones too. And you'll see a decreasing height of the peaks the further out you go. And that indicates the brightness is decreasing. So this central one here is considerably brighter than this one, which is considerably brighter than this one. And that's what this intensity graph is showing you. Okay, so that is the single slit and what the single slit looks like. Let's move on to the double slit or the Young's. Okay, so this is the fringe pattern for um, the double slit or the Young's interference. So this is what you would see on the screen. And double slits are governed by a slightly different equation. Um, and that's got it's still got the wavelength, it's still got the distance between the slit and the screen, but we've got some different symbols here. So the W is the distance between the centers of adjacent peaks like this. So this is your W, or it's called the fringe spacing. And then this S is the distance between the slits in your diffraction grating. So if this is a really zoomed in look at your diffraction grating, this is your S, so the distance between these slits. So that's the equation that governs it, and D is still the distance between the screen and the slit, and lambda is still the wavelength. So if we look at the intensity pattern for this one, uh, just scroll down. So you still have a much brighter central peak Actually, I should redo that because I've made it look too wide. So we've got a much narrower one here. So you'll notice all of the peaks are the same width for your diffraction grating like this. And we've still got the intensity decreasing as you move further out from the center. So we still have the brightest one and we still have the other subscreens. So if we look back at the equation, we can actually see the fringe spacing is a function of the wavelength. So if we choose a shorter wavelength, say like blue light, there we go, blue light, and look at this equation, we can see that if we use a smaller wavelength, we'll have a smaller fringe spacing. Um, so let's see what that would look like. So you would essentially get it looking something like this. So your blue light has been diffracted by a smaller angle, so all the peaks are closer together, so you get a smaller fringe spacing. So that's when you use a shorter wavelength, like blue, compared to red. Okay, so that's the double slit. Uh, let's look at a diffraction grating. So a diffraction grating on first observation looks very like a, a double slit, and uh, there are many, many similarities between the two. Um, but it's governed by a slightly different equation, and this is one you'll get very accustomed to using. Okay, so what does this equation mean? So if we sketch what a diffract happens in a diffraction grating, you've got some light, it encounters your slits, and then you get these different lines of interference, like this. If, and we say this is your screen here. So the n corresponds to your fringe number. So this is n equals 0, this is n equals 1, and this is n equals 2. This continues up and up and up and up, like that. And uh, the theta is the angle in there. Uh, so for this one, it's that value. For this one, the angle would be uh, 2 theta, and then 3 theta, and 4 theta, and so on, and so on. D is the distance between adjacent slits in your diffraction grating. Um, so that's what your D is, and then your lambda is still your wavelength here. And so this central fringe here 
corresponds to n equals 0, this is n equals 1, this is n equals 2, and there will be n equals 3, 4, etc, etc. So if we have a look at what the intensity pattern for this looks like, there, for these, there's much more of a sp fine spike like this. So, and the other thing is the drop-off in intensity tends to be um, smaller, so they stay uh, a high, uh, higher for longer. So we've still got the highest intensity in the centre compared to these ones, but these are much thinner spikes and much sharper spikes than we had with the diff double slit um, interference pattern there. Okay, so that is your diffraction grating and the equation that you use to um, notice that. Okay, so let's have a look at where this diffraction grating equation comes from, because that's something you need to be able to do for the AQA specification. You need to be able to derive this equation. So let's do that. Okay, so here we have a sketch of the setup. So this is going to be, over here, a certain maxima that's produced. So we're seeing a fringe here, so we know it's a maximum. And we know at a maximum point, the path difference must be a multiple of the wavelength. So it must be either one wavelength difference or two, three, four, etc. Because then they're at the same point in the wave cycle. So we know that if we find the difference between L2 and N1, L1, it's going to be a multiple of the wavelength where N is an integer. Um, because they need to match up with the points in the cycle. So they need to be at exactly zero phase difference. So that's what we can see from this diagram here. But for the rest of it, we actually need to zoom in. So this is this diagram zoomed into much closer scale. Okay, so what you can see in the diagram is a much more zoomed in look at the two rays we had in our previous diagram. But when you zoom in this far, it appears that these lines are traveling approximately parallel to each other. They're not exactly parallel, but they're as, as close as it's going to be to it. So we assume that they are parallel. So this one and this one are parallel. So if we drop a perpendicular line down from this blue one here, we know that from this point on, these two lines are going to travel the same distance. So there would be no path difference if they were starting from here and from here. So any path difference between the waves would be this distance on this red line here. And we know from the previous diagram that in order for them to arrive in phase, they must have a path difference equal to n lambda, so a, an integer multiple of lambda. But now when we look at this, we've got this here. So this is your angle of diffraction that occurred, so your theta on your diagram. So that is corresponds to this theta here, essentially the angle for where the fringe occurs in here. And then if we um, look at some angles that are really the same, this angle in here is going to be 90 minus theta because this whole angle is 90. This is 90 minus theta. So this one in here is going to be 90 minus 90 minus theta. So this one end up in here ends up being theta as well. So we can see that this length is given by n lambda, but it's also given by d sine theta by using our basic trigonometry. So this is where our diffraction grating comes from because we know that side has to be n lambda, but also from the triangle we know it must be d sine theta, and hey presto, you've got your diffraction grating equation. Okay, so that concludes um, this video here, looking at the theory essentially that matches with the observations from the single, double, and single slit, and this is how the diffraction grating equation is derived.